You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for The Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Monday. It is 2 p.m. Central. It is 3 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's cooking in the world of crypto? I guess we'll find out together. Yes, it is time for the Crypto Rundown. My name is Mark Longo from the T-H-E, OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the ever-engaging and quite crypto-focused a lot these days, the Options Insider Radio Network, of course, we get on the pro side as well. A lot of crypto fun hanging out there. So if you want Q&As with, let's say, uh, Tony Sleba, an options legend, but also running a digital asset firm these days as well. So very much has his feet in both worlds. Then you should have tuned into our pro Q&A last week. We had him on. It was a great session. You can still check it out, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Once you're there, hit that join button. And of course, you'll get access to archives for days literally 220 250 episodes something i lost track I'm waiting for you the second you hit that button so you could fill oh conservatively 10 days of non-stop streaming just with the pro content you have to catch up on when you hit that pro button of course new stuff hitting you every week and of course giveaways are coming up on the september pro trading crate giveaways so you get your name in the hat before the end of the month and you too can win fabulous prizes, but you know what? We all win because it's time to keep on rolling right on into the Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin breakdown. breakdown. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for the old BTC breakdown where we break down everything going on in the world's leading digital asset. And you know what? It's looking a little bit smaller than it was this time last week, but not much. On the show last week, 26,724. That's where we were hanging out in the old Bitcoin. Coming in this week, 26,352, down a whopping 371 handles on the week out there. Then let's go on a little bit further. Let's see, in terms of range on the week, Decent range, nothing crazy out there. 
The high came last Tuesday, so the day after our show, 27, almost 27,500, 27,488, and the low was 26,027. Looks like that came actually uh, this morning. So flirting with lows, but rallying coming into the show. In terms of vol, that little bit of a range wasn't enough to sustain our vol. We were getting a little bit frothier on the show last week. Bitcoin is kind of turning into a bit of an equity-like asset, not just in terms of correlation, but also when we drop a bit, we see the vol tend to pop, and that happened. We got the vol out of the mid-20s we were hanging out before that up into the high 30s. We were at 37 on the show last week. Uh, Coming into the start of the show this week, 34 and three quarters. So still frothier than it was, let's say, a month ago. But coming off the highs we saw not too long ago, near-term highs. Obviously, we've been higher. We've been over triple digits in Bitcoin. But in the near term, got a little bit frothier, given some of that back. But still a little bit bit juicy out there. In terms of 180-day vol, let's go out a little bit farther. That was, of course, the 30-day vol we were just talking about. Let's go out farther. Let's go six months down the chain, see what's cooking And the answer is not a heck of a lot. It was 48.3 on our show last week, so still obviously juicier and frothier, pricing in more vol, but they haven't really changed that level. It's 48.10 when we kicked off the show today. So again, kind of a whole heck of a lot of nothing on the longer-term vol front. Let's get out to the skew and see what's cooking out there. We saw, of course, when things sold off, we saw that skew get markedly negative. We know long-term, over time, that skew is usually biased to the upside. Let's see what we have cooking right now. Let's start near-dated and work our way out, shall we? Let's start with the weekly skew. Uh, last week on the show, it was almost a negative one, about a negative 0.8. So pretty much flat. Not a heck of a lot going on there. Coming into the start of the show this week, it was almost negative 4, negative 3 and 3 quarters on the weekly skew. So the near-dated options, and we all know the entire options world is obsessed with near-dated contracts right now. The near-dated options are showing a little bit of a bias to the dark side out there, which, again, given the price action I Broke down at the top of the segment. Maybe not entirely surprising. Let's go out a month. Let's see. On the show last week, it was positive. That's kind of interesting. So then weekly skew was slightly negative. We had swung to the positive on the one-month skew. Almost a positive to 1.8. And coming into the show today, it's pretty much flat. Negative 0.15. So that's pretty much flat in my book. So not a heck of a lot going on on the monthly skew. Let's go out six months and see how things are cooking. And not much going on there either. Last show, it was a positive 4.5. And this week... Positive four and a quarter. So still pricing in some juice to the upside, which, again, is usually the long-term bias for crypto. The hodlers out there, they want to hodl. They don't want to get short at the end of the day. So a little bit of a positive bias there, but not much of a change week on week. We could say the same thing for the OI in terms of what's open on Deribit right now. There are 220,000 contracts on the call side open on Deribit right now. That's up 14,000 from this time last week and 103,000 puts. That's up a whopping 1,000. So still hanging out. A little bit north of two to one calls over puts on the Deribit front. Let's hit the former preferred vector. Maybe you folks have other preferred vectors now. In fact, I do believe we have a question about that coming up a little bit later. But we'll start sinking our teeth into Bitto. It still is in terms of optionable. I won't say one to one because nothing's one to one except for you know Bitcoin itself, really. But uh, in terms of direct tracking vehicles that are optionable, you can put in your securities account. You don't have many options, pun intended, but Bitto is one of them. 13 and a half, down two-tenths of a point on the week. So again, kind of treading water this week. Uh, the ADV is 19,000. That's not treading water. That's moving in the wrong direction. That's down about 4,000 contracts. And today we've already got 16,000, so maybe you're going to break that today. But still, not a heck of a lot cooking out there. Vol-wise, also seeing the vol come in quite a bit. It's a 35 right now, down a little over 5, about 5.6 points from where it was this time last week. So we were north of 40 last week. Giving a lot of that up this week. In terms of top positions out in Bitto, let's just do a top five listeners. Again, it's still all calls all the time, not a put to be found. Number five, we got 28,000 of the Jan 20s. Number four, our old friends, 41,000 of the Jan 2025. 25 calls. Number three, 63,000 of the Jan 2025. 35 calls. Number two, 68,000 of the regular Jan. 65 calls. Six, five. And then the number one size position in Bitto Options, 81,000 of the Jan 2025, 30 calls. All right, listeners, let's keep on rolling now, see if we can find some fun out there in the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, welcome. 
to the Allcoin Universe, the portion of the show where we break down everything, lighting it up to the light side and to the dark side outside of the big dog, which is Bitcoin, except for right now. We're going to break down the top 10. And once again, Tron sneaking back onto the top 10 listeners. That's probably because we're seeing a little bit lighter. We're below 8 billion right now to break into the top 10, about 7.5 billion. That means Tron, once again, can sneak its way into the top 10. They're coming in number 10. Seven and a half billion. Number nine, Solana, right above it, a little bit over eight billion. Number eight, it's Doge. Man, Doge has just a death grip on the number eight spot. 8.6 billion. Number seven, it's Cardano, also 8.6. In fact, it looks like it's only three million more <laughs> than Doge. So just just barely managing to eke its way past Doge. Number six, USD coin, 25.6 billion. Number five, XRP, 26.8 billion number four bmb 32.3 billion number three it's tether 83.2 billion number two it's eth 191 and a half billion and the big dog is bitcoin still managing to be north of half a trillion but ever so slightly 513 billion worth of market cap now out to eth kind of the same story as bitcoin down but down slightly it was 1634 almost 1635 on our show last week coming into the start of the show today it was almost 15 91 puts it down about 43 handles and change on the week in terms of range the high was 1669 it came after our show last week the low came earlier today so week on week we're setting highs and lows here on the show the low is 1565 coming in earlier today in the session ball wise similar trajectory to bitcoin but also still surprisingly managing to stay below bitcoin from a vol perspective which is unusual if you've been tracking the space for a while, we've been we first noticed it a little over a month ago, maybe two months ago, saying, "Wow, it's kind of surprising." ETH usually structurally more volatile than Bitcoin, but starting to dip below it, and it has yet to recover from a vol perspective. Thirty-one point four on the show last week, twenty-eight point seven this week. So, Bitcoin vol hanging out in the roughly mid thirties range, and got ETH back in the twenties. So that's interesting. Going out a little bit farther, that was your 30-day vol. Let's go out, let's say six months. And kind of the similar story out there in terms of not a heck of a lot going on. 41.65 on our show last week, 42 this week. So longer term vol, still juicier, just like we see in Bitcoin, but also not moving a heck of a lot. Let's go out to the skew, see if we see any evolution there. Let's go near dated to longer term as we like to do. Let's go out seven days first. And the skew last week, pretty much flat positive half so not much going on there this week swinging to the dark side negative five so looking pretty bearish at least in the near dated contracts right now you go a little bit farther out let's go out a month on the show last week it was about a positive one that also has swung to the negatives almost a negative four negative 3.8 right now so we're seeing a lot of near dated bearish interest concern call it what you will out there the puts trading to a premium to the calls right now that's all we really know and in terms of the longer term skew 180 days. It was firmly positive just last week. 3.6 coming into the start of the show this week. It's been cut in half. It's now 1.8. So some of the optimism, maybe some of that bloom coming off the ETH rose. Mr. Bill was talking about that with us on the show last week, about how you know ETH maybe has lost some of its first mover advantage out there. So many other products gunning for it these days. So maybe that's reflected somewhat in some of this skew out there. In terms of OI... 2.65 million calls open on Darab. That's up about 220,000. In terms of puts, 878,000, up 63,000. So a little over three to one calls over puts out there right now on the ETH options front. Let's run down some others and we'll get your questions and we'll get out of here for this Just the Facts Ma'am edition this week, listeners. Solana, when we kicked off the show last week, 1962. This week, 1953. So pretty much treading water again this week. Same deal with XRP, 50.2 cents last week, 50.4 cents this week. So, again, whole heck of a lot of nothing. Doge, everyone's favorite Doge, 6.1 cents last week. Guess what? 6.1 cents this week as well. So, a lot of tread and water going on in the altcoin universe this week. Uh, Litecoin, Litecoin usually moves somewhere. And a little bit of movement this week. 66.04 last week, 64.56 this week. So, down about a buck 48 on the week let's run a few more here and then we'll get your questions cardano 25.1 cents last week 24.5 cents this week's not a heck of a lot of evolution there polka dot 412 last week 408 this week so again same deal nothing going on there and speaking of nothing shiba last week 0.0000728 this week exactly the same not a tick of difference 
and Shiba week on week. So in the altcoin universe, at least, we're doing a whole heck of a lot of treading water. But you know it's never treading water. It's your questions. Let's get to them now. A little bit of the old crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, everybody, let's get to it. Remember I said earlier in the show we're going to have a question about some of the other products outside of Bitto. It comes from MACD this week. He wants to know, perhaps she, can you do a rundown of Mara and Riot on your show as well as Bitto? Some of us like to trade those as well. Well, you are correct there, Mr. or Mrs. MACD. In fact, when we ran a poll on our network Earlier this year, we asked you folks, what was your preferred vehicle in terms of crypto products? Trying to get the exact results for you now, listeners. But we gave you those choices. We gave you Bitto. We gave you Mara. We gave you Riot. I threw another one in there as well. Coinbase. There we go. This was from July 24th, the week of July 24th of this year, listeners. Uh, we asked you folks that there are many ways for options traders to get crypto exposure in their securities accounts. Mara, Riot, Coinbase, and Bitto are all popular choices. But what is your weapon of choice for crypto options exposure? At the end of the day, 35.2%. So ever so slightly, Mara taking the lead, followed by number two, Coinbase, 29.6%. Number three, Riot, 18.5%. Bitto bringing up the rear, only 16.7%. And you know, the ADV these days does seem to Bear that out. Not a lot of folks sling in Bitto. It was doing 100,000 contracts a day not too long ago. That has fallen off a cliff. It's down to 16,000 now. So interesting how the mighty have fallen out there in the crypto options space. So we're going to explore a few others per your request. Is this something you like to see on the show on a regular basis, listeners? Mac D sounds like he would, but this intrigues you. Hit us up. Let us know if you'd like us to include some of the other optionable crypto-related names that a lot of you like to sling. We'll start in Maryland, listeners, at about an 863 right now. Again, we haven't been tracking it, so we don't have the change on the week. Let's look at it on the year, though, and see how Mara has been performing. If you're not familiar, listeners, this is Marathon Digital Holdings. For a long time, before there was a Biddle, this was a lot of people's proxy for crypto in their portfolio, especially back in the heady days of 2021. They do a lot of crypto mining and a lot of other fun in the quote-unquote blockchain ecosystem. A year ago, they were 961, so they're off about a buck or a little over 11% of the year. Then they rallied it up to about 14 bucks, almost 15 in October of last year. Then they crushed it to the low for the year of 311. That was in December of last year. So since then, they've it's done nicely, obviously. Uh, they rallied it actually up to the high for the year in July of this year. It hit almost 20 bucks, 1988. So from three bucks in December to 20 bucks. In July, that's a nice pop. They obviously have since given that back. Since July, it's been kind of rough all the way back down to eight dollars and sixty-three cents, where we find it today. In terms of volume, yeah, it puts up some numbers. Again, we we're talking about Bitto, sixteen thousand. The ADV somewhere around that. The ADV in Mara right now, one hundred and seventy-four thousand contracts a day going up in Mara. So Mara putting up some numbers. Now, obviously, the challenge for all these names is these are not just tracking vehicles for Bitcoin or ETH at the end of the day. These are obviously companies. So there's other issues. There's governance. There's assets they may own, how they're valuing things. All the things that go into the traditional valuation of a stock have to be considered with these names, not just the price of the cryptocurrency that they're mining in this case. So that's what makes some people shy away from them because they're not direct one-to-one. -one. But if you want that exposure, obviously the price of crypto is going to play a part in the value of this asset. So what percentage, what part, that's where the rubber meets the road a little bit out there. In terms of action, what are the size open positions in Mara options right now? Let's let's dig into it, shall we? Looks like you can find some calls and puts out here. Number five, we have 18,000 of the Jan 10 puts. Again, I said we're trading about an 863 right now, so those are now in the money puts. Number four, 19, almost 20,000 of the November 15 puts. Number three, 20,000 of the Jan 10 calls. So that 10 strike, holding a little bit of fascination for some folks. Number two, 21,000 of the November 15 calls. And the top position in Mara options right now, 22,000 of the Jan 5 puts. Let's just take a look really quickly, shall we? And see 
when they opened those and what they were up to using the magic of technology out here, listeners. It looks like they opened a good chunk of them back in December of last year. So back when we were hanging out at the Nader for it. Yeah, wow. December 21st. They sold, looks like 10,000 of them for nearly three bucks. Wow. That was when Mara was trading three sixty nine, so a five dollar put for three bucks. So you're effectively legging into the stock at two dollars if these puts are put to you, listeners. So intriguing. Obviously, these have worked out. The challenge with selling puts is you're not going to get all of that. Obviously, now you have to wait for some of that decay to come out of these. But still, not a bad do, as they used to say on the floor. All things considered, out there now. Of course, if you had bought the stock, you did well as well. A lot of different ways you could make money on the run from three to now nearly nine and of course nearly 20 they're still open which is interesting so they haven't taken them off which is uh, kind of interesting yes obviously you gotta you gotta wait a little bit (laughs) gotta wait a little bit for these ones listeners unfortunately to actually actually take them off looks like they're trading for about 32 cents right now so they could get most of their money if they close them out right now maybe they want to wait to get the last 32 cents you know if past is prologue, pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered, listeners. You wait for that last 32 cents, you've made nearly three bucks on these. That's when something crazy could happen. But intriguing stuff out there. Let's go out to the other one you asked about, MACD. And this is good old Riot trading $9.30. This is now Riot Platforms. There we go. Ticker symbol R-I-O-T, listeners. And again, another one folks have used for a while as a proxy for crypto and their securities account and also optionable uh, the adv for this one we were just talking about mara is one hundred seventy four thousand. not quite as active as mara but still a far sight more than biddle right now eighty eight thousand contracts a day and we have fifty one thousand going up today a uh, riot hanging out right around nine thirty right now so kind of hanging out treading water today like the rest of the crypto market on the year a year ago it was trading six dollars and seventy cents and then it gently drifted also to its nadir, also in that same time frame, December. So clearly, the price of these crypto assets is driving these things to move in lockstep, but not quite one-to-one the way Bitto is, or at least an approximate of one-to-one. Uh, December 30th was the low for this one, right around three and a quarter. And then it rallied again, like our other name, hit its high of $20.65 on July 13th. So if you had either of these, you scooped them in December of last year, around three bucks, and you got rid of them anytime near July. You're doing pretty good. Uh, since July, of course, had the bloom has come off the rose right back down to nine and a quarter. So price-wise, they're not that far apart from each other. Volume-wise, one's roughly 2x the other, but still not that dissimilar on this front. In terms of vol, by the way, I didn't break down the vol in Mara. Obviously, a little bit more volatile than the underlying asset as well. Again, that gets into the complications of you're trading a company, not just a, an asset anymore. And the vol in Mara, 92, so pretty juicy. And the vol in Riot, 89. So you're not getting a lot for selling those puts or those covered calls in Bitto, but if you're doing said trades, you're doing those trades in Riot or Mara, get a little bit more juice out there. In terms of top positions, let's do a quick top five here in Riot as well. Listeners, number five, we have 11,000 of the Jan 50s, the five O's. My goodness. <laughs> Is that a vestigial position from back when we were at a much loftier level? Even still, we only got to about nearly 21 this year. That's an interesting one. You know what that means, listen. We have to dig in and see when that was opened as well and what they were up to. It looks like they opened them a couple of times, a couple of 4,000 change lots. Back in August of this year was the most recent, but they started, looks like they started it back in April of this year, back when Riot was $10.39. And what were they up to? It looks like they overrode them for 50 cents. They were able to sell the Jan 50s, 5 O's, for 50 cents when Riot was trading $10.38. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't blame them then. I tip my cap to you. <laughs> That's pretty much a free 50 cents. And I'm sure if Riot rallied to 50 bucks, listeners, they would be more than happy to let their shares go, which I'm sure they have against this, let their shares go at $50. So, wow. 50 cents for the 50s, that shows you how crazy things were. My goodness. 
What were the 40s? What were the 30s? <laughs> wow. Uh, number four, 11,000 of the Nova 11 calls. You know, that goes back to some of the old days we used to see with these crypto assets where the upside call wing was just bid to high heaven. Sounds like for a little while there, Riot was hanging out in that league. Uh, number three, 12,000 of the Jan 10 puts. Number two, 13, almost 14,000 of the Jan 10 calls. And the number one size position right now, (laughs) same deal, in good old Riot listeners, 16, almost 17,000 of the Jan 65, six fives. We got to dig into those as well. It's like a lot of those were opened back in March. It's like, oh, wow, they were buying maybe these for around 20, 21 cents. Maybe they were legging into a vertical, the Jan 50, 65. (laughs) I guess if you sold the, why would you buy those if you, <laughs> if you sold those? And obviously it didn't go up as a spread listener, so I'm just having some fun. But yeah, there's no reason to sell the 50s, 50s, and then buy the 65s. I think you'd be more than happy to, uh, unless this thing just exploded and you're worried about that. In which case you're willing to pay 20 of the 50 cents you just made. I don't know. That seems crazy to me. Either way, this upside paper is crazy, but that's what makes these underlying names and these crypto-related names so much fun. All right, great question there, Mac D. That opens up another question for you folks. Would you like to see us profile these, maybe analyze this paper a little bit more on the show? It's kind of interesting. It's not quite one-to-one crypto paper, but they are very much crypto-related, and that drives a lot of the flow out there. And for a lot of you, this is your preferred vehicle. So if that's you, hit us up, let us know. Maybe we'll start incorporating these into the show uh, down the road. But that's going to do it for our show today. Hope you folks had fun. Hope you folks are having fun. A good trading week out there. Back again throughout the rest of the week with our usual array of content. So that includes Options Boot Camp for all you newcomers to the world of options. Should be checking that out. Includes this week in Futures Options, which is the other show on the network which touches on crypto. Of course, our pro Q&As for our pro friends. Options Oddities for our pro friends. Only one place to go to get those. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Giveaway happening soon as well for the September trading crate. Get your name in the hat there. And then back again next week, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>